What I'm about to show you right now in this video didn't even hit YouTube yet or to the very least is super hard to figure out on your own because miners and people around Bitensor aren't incentivized to help you mine on Bitensor because everybody wants a piece of the pie. Everybody is competing for emissions. So it's a cold world out there. Strap up, take a cup of coffee because I have a bigger purpose on this channel. I want to show to regular people just like you and me who have zero developer background experience that it is possible to make good money and to earn mining emissions on the Bitensor network. After researching over a hundred subnets, here are two super easy subnets that you can start to mine on within a week starting from zero. Let's get to the video. I want you to start clicking and understanding that you can be a full-fledged AI model developer on a subnet and on other subnets like these ones, you can simply run a node for emissions. So the first subnet you need to start mining on as a beginner is subnet 7 called Subvortex. What is it? So basically everybody knows in crypto what a node is. People decentralize networks with nodes, etc. So in Bitensor, you're going to run a subtensor node as a miner to decentralize the Bitensor base layer, which is super important. So what is it used for? So you need to fetch blockchain data, uh, all the web tools that developer use, they need to fetch that data from the blockchain and display it to people like a Metagraph or a leaderboard. They need blockchain information, consensus heights, etc. Uh, anytime someone unstakes or stakes or does a transaction, this needs to be recorded and kept in, you know, in a public ledger. So you're going to run a node and earn BitTensor emissions. In simple terms, on your subtensor node, validators are constantly going to ask you things. And this is just a fictional code example where we see a validator asking a miner, uh, you know, where are we in the chain? What's the block height with the piece of code chain get header? And after that, the miner responds with a number. And then at the bottom, you see how the validator um, scores the miner with his speed, uh, his availability and things like that. To set up your sub vortex miner, I really think it's beginner friendly. I suggest you use a virtual private server just to not use your own computer and worry about like maintenance and uptime. Um, the requirements are super easy. Like I think you need eight CPU cores and like uh, 3.5 gigahertz of speed. It's really not that expensive. You, you can find this for like five, 10 bucks a month. So it's really worth it for you to start dabbling and trying that. Uh, the first step I just, really suggest you to read the whole GitHub and specifically when you're ready and you have your terminal set up, you purchased it, you're familiar with how it works, just go and copy paste each of the minor setup uh, commands into the terminal from GitHub. And if you run into some problems, just use ChatGPT. It's your best friend. Go on Discord and ask some questions. And it's really possible. Within a week, you'll get the hang of it from a complete beginner and you'll have a miner running. To earn proper emission and make the most amount of money possible as a miner, you need to respect these four criteria, which are scored by validators. So the first one is the speed of your node. So when you get a request, does your node answer quickly? Second of all, where is your node located? Is it close to other nodes? Is it very far? Is it in a random area? This also contributes to your total score as a miner. Also, is your node accurate? If a validator sends you a request to give the block height and you answer something else because there's a glitch in your code, uh, you're, you're probably gonna, going to lose some points. And lastly, does your node constantly crash? Are you turning it on or off? Is it reliable as a node? This is important as well for your scoring output. Super important for you to grasp, once you're all set up and running on the BitTensor mainnet, you need to stay competitive. So there's a threshold on BitTensor where if you fall beneath that line, you are considered a vulnerable miner. And obviously there's not unlimited spots for people to mine on. And 
If you're underneath that threshold because your miner is too slow or you're answering incorrectly or you're crashing constantly, as soon as someone pays the registration cost to enter, he'll kick you out immediately and he'll become an immune miner for a couple of hours before he himself can also get kicked out by other miners. And this is the art and the concept as to why BitTensor is hyper competitive is literally because of that minor deregistration threshold. To stay competitive and not fall underneath that threshold to get kicked out, you would need to optimize your miner in any type of subnet. There are some minimal optimizations to do. Here is a simple example um, uh, of an optimization you could do on your miner. So here with this piece of code, we're actually um, developing a web server on our miner. We're implementing it. So when a validator pings us, we can handle multiple requests at once, which is going to lower our, our latency, which is going to increase our speed. And then we're going to get a higher score. So we're not going to fall underneath that threshold line I mentioned earlier. So the second subnet is called FlameWire. It's actually subnet 97. And it's a decentralized API and RPC request through a unified endpoint for developers. I know that sounded like a lot of buzzwords, but let me break it down for you in more simple terms. So let's say a developer wants to create a web wallet or a metagraph, a leaderboard, or even a scraper bot. He needs blockchain information from day one. And that's where you as a miner, you come into play. You need to run a full BitTensor archive node since the day one of you know, the launch of the network. While building his tool, that developer is naturally going to need a lot of automatic information routing to his uh, product that he's building. So he's going to do an API or RPC request to your full node. And then the subnet FlameWire, it's already hard coded. It's going to do intelligent routing for his request to get uh, routed to the best possible node that's going to give him uh, you know, the best answer, the quickest way possible, the most accurate answer in a timely fashion. And that is the node that is going to be paid the most and that is going to be the most properly scored by validators on that subnet. A typical example would be a developer requesting a JSON RPC call to your node. And he's basically asking or his web tool is asking the latest block of the chain what type of transactions are there, how many transactions and other inf important information inside the block. Once that validator gives you the task, as a miner, you're going to also respond to the developer via a JSON RPC answer. And you're just going to give him the exact timestamp, time the block height, uh, other important information, like how many transactions there are in the block, for example, 3000 transaction. And this information is going to be useful to the developer for him to update the interface of his wallet user, for example, or just the leaderboard uh, web tool that he built. To set up your FlameWire node, it's exactly the same process. Just go on GitHub, look at the miner setup guide, have your terminal ready and start pasting these commands. Make sure you know what you're doing. Ask ChatGPT, go see the Discord, go see the pinned messages as well. There's a lot of golden information there. And it's pretty much the same thing. However, uh, a FlameWire node is a full archive node. So you need at least two, three terabytes of storage. I suggest three terabytes or more because you need to sync the whole blockchain. To stay competitive on subnet 97 is actually the same logic as the first subnet we covered. Because both subnets inherently you are running a node, so mainly you are evaluated by speed, accuracy, um, geographic location, and just your uptime of your node. Me personally, why I chose to mine on subnet 97 is mainly because I have more belief long term into that subnet for a couple of reasons. So first of all, FlameWire has a revenue model in place. So anytime a developer that requests an API or RPC call, this costs money and he can either pay in fiat, in Tao, in the alpha token in itself. And also all the revenue that the team is generating, most of it, they're going to buy back their alpha token and they're going to burn the alpha token. So this causes a price increase. 
And obviously I'm incentivized to mine in a summit where the alpha token is continuously going up instead of just crashing because I don't want to mine useless alpha tokens. There you have it guys, that wraps it up. I hope you're one step closer to becoming a BitTensor miner. I highly suggest you start dabbling into the GitHub documentation, go read the miner setups, the minimum computational requirements, and just get familiar with VPSs, how to use one, how to buy one, uh, etc. I think in one week, starting from zero, uh, you're gonna have enough information to spin up your own BitTensor miner, which is a huge achievement. And let me know if you want a full step-by-step -step guide on how to set up your FlameWire node, because I'm very close to that. I'm actually trying to mine it. And you know, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, drop a like and subscribe, because I'll be dropping weekly videos.